Hi everyone, in this video we are going to perform the agarose gel electrophoresis experiment and we are going to explore on what is agarose gel electrophoresis technique, how does it work, materials required, procedure, observation and inference, applications. Now what is the agarose gel electrophoresis method? Agarose gel electrophoresis is used to separate DNA, RNA proteins or other macromolecules by size using an electric field that induces negatively charged molecules to migrate to the positive electrode through a porous matrix of agarose gel. Now how does the agarose gel electrophoresis method work? DNA molecules have a phosphate group that confer a negative charge to the molecule. An electric field is applied. Negatively charged DNA molecules move towards the anode the positively charged electrode through a gel matrix. The gel matrix provides the sieving effect due to the small pores in the gel. Larger molecules pass through the pores slower than the smaller molecules. Therefore, molecules dissociate according to size. The materials required 2 alligator clip leads 5 fully charged 9V batteries They are supposed to be arranged in this fashion A silver wire 18 to 24 gauge to be cut into 2 electrodes having a bend and a slightly larger than the box baking powder for the buffer solution, 3 food colors, a strong plastic box for example a soap box, a dropper in this case a medicinal dropper, agar powder or china grass strips and lastly we need mixing bowls and measuring cups. First, we are going to prepare our buffer solution which consists of baking powder and deionized water in the ratio 1 is to 1. For this, by following the ratio, we have to add 200 ml of deionized water into our mixing bowl. Next. We add 2 grams of baking powder into our mixing bowl which is approximately half a teaspoon of baking powder. We have to mix this solution well. Next, we are going to melt our china grass strips by boiling it in hot water. If you have agar powder instead, you can simply add 1 gram of the powder in 100 ml buffer solution and heat it in the microwave. Next, we pour the hot mixture into the plastic box. Make sure not to fill the gel up to the brim. Next, for our wells, we are going to insert a styrofoam comb having three evenly spaced teeth into the hot solution. Make sure that the teeth do not touch the bottom. Now, we have to wait for the gel to set, which can take about 10 to 30 minutes. After the gel has set, we are going to add the buffer solution we had prepared earlier. Next, we have to remove the comb carefully so as to not disturb the wells. Now, we have to make two cuts at the two ends of the chamber for inserting the electrodes. Make sure to not disturb the wells in this process. It's time to insert the electrodes. Insert the negative electrode or cathode at the end nearby the wells and insert the positive electrode or anode at the end away from the wells. Now carefully add the three food colors into the wells using a dropper. 
For completing the circuit, the red wire connected to the positive terminal should be connected to the anode away from the wells. Similarly, the black wire connected to the negative terminal should be connected to the cathode end that is nearby the wells. Be careful that you do not reverse the connection or the food color will start migrating backwards. Here's a time lapse of my experiment that took 30 minutes to complete. For this experiment, the observation can include a table that specifies the color, the type, the colors after electrophoresis and the migration distance traveled in specific time intervals. From this, you can infer that green has traveled the maximum distance, therefore its molecules are comparatively smaller than those of red and blue. Now why is this technique so important? It includes applications like separation of DNA fragments for DNA fingerprinting to investigate crime scenes, to analyze the results of PCR, to analyze genes associated with a particular disease, and blotting techniques for analysis of macromolecules.